Out of the blue, Fanatec have relaunched the CSL Elite pedals, now in the form of the CSL Elite pedals V2. And Fanatec have sent me a set of the CSL Elite pedal V2s to uh, check out on this channel. Now the CSL Elite pedals were some of my favorite sim racing pedals, especially when you look at the design, the quality and the value for money that you got with them. So it's gonna be really interesting to see what's changed with the CSL Elite pedals V2 and uh, if they continue the trend of the original CSL Elite pedals. Fasten your seatbelts, make a cup of tea and let's do a little bit of unboxing and super nerdy pedal nattering. This is the part of the video where I explain that you should always remain critical when watching YouTube content. Fanatec sent me these pedals, I didn't buy them, and I also have a Fanatec affiliate link in the video description. If you click that before buying stuff from the Fanatec store, I receive a small percentage of the sale. Always be critical of any information that you consume. And under no circumstances should you ever trust a YouTuber. They are genuinely terrible people. Okay, over to groin cam for the unboxing. This is the best view that uh, you could get. I mean, it's better than a view of a egg reflecting the sunlight from the window. So at least it's got that going for it. Let's open up the box here and uh, see how it's uh, all done. So... Uh, says the name of the pedals on top in case you're easily confused and forget what you've bought. After the, this is a, they've decided to turn this into a kid's reading book. Two, two uh, words to start with, keeping it nice and simple. That, that should actually work quite well for the average intellect of a sim racer. After the, and I've just realized I can't, I oh know we can open that without blocking camera. Third flip, I lost control. These are all uh, famous driver quotes that uh, Fanatec put on their boxes. I don't know anything, so I don't know who made that quote. It was probably maybe Sterling Moss, Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton, Alfred Hitchcock. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Personally, I don't really care what's written on boxes, but it was a good story. It was, it was a nice story. It's one I won't forget. So. Nicely packaged, held in place. If you've got a pet hamster, they'll be delighted. You've now got uh, an incredible hamster maze. Let's put those to one side. Not foam as well, cards, so that's great for the environment. Uh, sim racers, of course, passionate about saving the environment. That's why we don't drive real race cars. And uh, here's the actual pedals in a nice bag. Again, Fanatec thinking about the details here, this not being plastic, great for the environment, but also no risk of a child accidentally crawling inside this, this bag and suffocating themselves. So that's, that's great attention to detail. Fanatec, pro children and pro the environment, confirmed. Okay, so let's quickly go over what you actually get in the box. Obviously you get the pedals, uh, be pretty silly if you didn't. We get some Fanatec stickers, uh, you can wear them out when on your forehead at a wedding or when you go out uh, clubbing and stuff, um, they will make you look really cool. We've got the instructions here, which um, I don't know, some people say you read these to understand what's going on. I, I never really got it myself. I tend to just uh, fiddle with stuff and break it and then, and then try and work out where I put this little booklet to unbreak what I've broken. But uh, you've got the instructions here, specifically the, the key things worth noting in terms of how not to break your pedals. Don't plug in the USB cable and the, uh, the, the cable to the back of the uh, wheel at the same time. I think that's probably the only way you're likely to break them. Decide if you're gonna plug them into your wheelbase, if you've got a Fanatec wheelbase, and then that's the only thing you need to do, or if you're gonna plug them into the PC and that's the only thing you're gonna do. Uh, I think you do get slightly higher resolution if you plug it directly into your PC, but if you plug it into a wheel, obviously that gives you the full control of the uh, load cell from the, from the steering wheel itself without any additional software. Uh, and obviously if you're on console, um, you have to plug them into the wheelbase, any of the Fanatec wheelbases that have the console support so you can then use the pedals with the games console. But uh, we've got the instructions here. We've got another little 
box with uh, the uh, different elast elastomers in it, which is fantastic. So you can adjust the amount of travel and force required to actuate the, uh, well, required to move the load cell pedal, which then pushes onto the load cell itself. So you can change the brake feel and set things up to how you want. Uh, nice, we've also got a, uh, as well as the astronomers, we've also got a, a, a preload spring here. I generally don't like having a preload spring because I feel it gives it a bit of a elastic -y feel to the brake rather than a hydraulic -y feel, um, if that makes sense. So I might have to look myself at tweaking these out, twiddling them and seeing what we like, but out of the box, it's all set up and ready to go. And it feels actually pretty good out of the box in terms of hand feel. We'll have to actually try it with our feet to get a really good idea. What else we get in the box is a fake dummy box, which is just, this just separates the two sides out. So uh, a bit of trickery from Fanatec there. Here we go, we've got the USB cable, so you can plug them directly into your PC if you want to. And then we've got the uh, fabled telephone cable. This is so you can pretend that it's still the 1980s and uh, relive those glorious days before modern internet and uh, social media ruined everything. Connect to your BBS system, have a nice chat on a, on a text board. Uh, but this, this is so you can plug it directly into your wheelbase if you want to. As I say, that allows you to then use it on console and use all the features and what have you directly from the wheel rim. You can still tweak the features actually from the wheel rim uh, if you've got all the software installed on PC and you're using it on a PC with the USB cable. Nonetheless, we've also got this little bag here with uh, some tools. We've got some Allen keys and a wrench, so we can uh, do all the adjustment and everything. Let's put this on the floor here and take a little closer look at the pedals. So, in terms of immediate pedal feel, as I say, the brakes got that nice little bit of movement initially from, from this uh, spring and then then you start getting into the heavier elastonomers. So you get a nice, you get a little bit of travel, nice bit of feel. This actually is a good in-between. It's not rock solid, it's got a little bit of movement. I think, I think that'll give a nice uh, foot feel straight out of the box. So it's really good that they've gone for that. I think some, some pedals out of the box, there's a t tendency for them to go for like the rock, <laughs> rock solid brake because there's this weird myth in sim racing where all real race cars have brick-like brakes. And it's like, well, some Formula cars, if they've chosen to be set up like that, but it's entirely up to the driver's preference. And most cars that most people would be driving in most sims can, will, will generally actually have quite soft brakes uh, with a little bit of travel. It's gonna to totally depend, it's totally driver preference. So this is a nice in-between. The main thing is for sim racing though, is that you just, because there's no braking feel in a, in a driving sim, in a real car, uh, if you brake, you, you can tell how much to push the brake by the G-forces that you're feeling and the, the tire slip feel uh, on your entire body. You don't get that in a sim rig, even with a motion rig, even with seatbelt tensioners. So you, you kind of learn how much pressure you're putting on the brake um, to, to really know how much you are applying the brake force and then repetition. Unless you're playing the original Assetto Corsa because that actually has great force feedback for brake feel, which is somewhat analogous to what you feel through your body, but through the wheel. But with most sims, they don't actually have decent force feedback for braking apart from some rumble and stuff, which is too late. Anyway, so a firmer brake or a, a very consistent brake is much more important in sim racing than real life. Um, but this feels like a great all round in between for being able to feel what the brake's doing. Let's not go too deep into the, <laughs> the brake Sim racing brake conundrum. Uh, random call sign, go and watch his channel. He has a good video talking about driver preference for braking. He also interviews a bunch of real world drivers that uh, set things straight and hopefully smash the silly sim racing myths that, <laughs> that have been built up over the last few years. Um, let's have a feel here, which is the accelerator? I'm gonna have to think about this back to front. That is the accelerator. <laughs> That's the accelerator. Um, yeah, it's quite a, I wouldn't say it's got the hardest of springs on it. I wouldn't say it's got the loosest of springs. It's very similar to the uh, CSL Elite, the previous CSL Elite pedals. In fact, it feels like exactly the same tension. As far as I'm aware, I don't think you can adjust the strength of the spring on these pedals. 
but that's, that's uh, you know that's going to give you a nice return again you can be precise does feel like uh, this one could do with being the bolts could maybe do with being loosened a tiny bit because it feels like there's a tiny bit of stiction there um we'll have to see i've had this happen with loads of pedals i've got before even more like thousand pound plus pedals sometimes you have to loosen them a little bit so hopefully we should be able to loosen that a tiny bit or it's just a case that you use it a little bit and then that allows the oil to get into it and it's uh, totally loose. Most people wouldn't even notice, to be honest. <laughs> I'm really finicky when it comes to accelerator pedal and accelerator pedal feel. Um, but yeah, nice bit of throw. I'd say on the grand scheme of things, it's, it's kind of like average pedal throw. It's what you generally expect. Um, I don't know if you can adjust it. Uh, if you can take this out you could always you could always uh, add something to it to make it shorter pedal throw before it bottoms out and then adjust it in software but yeah a, an all-round great accelerator pedal there i quite like my accelerator pedals uh, quite light if you like to super heavy accelerator pedal i th feel that you you might want this to be uh, a little bit stronger than the spring it's got in it it's a good again this is feels like a very good in between from my experience of pedals um i've got uh Husenveld ultimates Mecha, Mecha Cup C1s, Proto Simtech, um, the CSL pedals, the old CSL elites. I, I've pretty much used every, every pedal on the market. This is very much in the middle <laughs> of every pedal in terms of uh, spring strength and movement distance. Uh, we've already talked about the brake a bit. We've got the clutch here. Actually, it feels like the clutch has a stronger spring on it. Okay, so the clutch has a stronger spring. So it could be that some people, if you wanted a stronger accelerator spring, you could possibly swap the clutch and the accelerator. I'm not sure if that's supported. It might be. Um, it might depend how you wire it up as to what's the clutch and the accelerator. It might not be supported, but there's an idea. Don't <laughs> double check on the uh, Fanatec forums. I'll double check as well. I'll put in the comments if that's something possible. But yeah, the slightly stiffer clutch pedal to the accelerator pedal. Exactly the same smoothness um, and degree of stiction that the accelerator pedal has as well. We've also got these bars in the back here. These are these just for additional rigidity. Personally, I don't think you're really going to need them. I mean, if, if you're just going to use the pedals on the floor, maybe it's an idea. But uh, I always use these on a rig and you, you use these holes to sort of bolt it to a rig. So it's not going to go anywhere. But it's nice that it's all set up out the box, ready to go there. Um, no adjustment needed, load cell ready. You can literally just buy them and slap them on your rig and get driving. Uh, fantastic. Other things we're saying, you've got the pedal faces here. You actually have uh, a plastic sort of rubber cover on the pedal faces that if you drive in shoes or you just want more grippy pedal faces, you can put those uh, rubber covers on so that your feet are sticking to the actual pedal face. Uh, personally, I like to drive in socks. And one of the reasons I like to drive in socks is because I actually like to slide my <laughs> feet on the pedals a bit and use that for additional control. I wouldn't do that in a real car myself. I'd be wearing shoes and I want my feet to stick to the pedals as much as possible so they're not going all over the place. But in a sim rig, where nothing's really moving, and even on a pretty aggressive motion rig, things aren't moving that much, I like to have socks and uh, happy loose feet. So you can take them off if you want and uh, do what you want. You can't move the uh, pedal faces though, unfortunately. These are all stuck in position, so you can't do the Gamer Muscle Super Mega Wide pedal, which is a shame. I guess you could probably fashion something, but you, you, you're sort of stuck with what, you, what they've got here. But uh, what they do have is, is quite nice. Uh, all uh, metallic construction. Not much more to say really in terms of the unboxing here. You've got the controller box at the bottom that the uh, each bit plugs into and then that's where the USB goes into or where the port for plugging into a wheel goes into. You can also move these pedals around a little bit. If you take off the uh, tension rods, or I don't know what they call them, but if you take off these, you can actually put the pedals in slightly different positions. So you could reconfigure these with you know, just the brake and the accelerator if you do formula or move the uh, the brake across a little bit. Um, it's a little bit limited how much you can move them. Uh, as you see, there you go. 
you can undo these and move them a bit. You, you don't get a huge amount of movement, but you get a little bit there, straight out of the box, not bad. I think that's the thing with these CSL Elite pedals, is they're kind of, they kind of do the function of, do you want some really nice load cell pedals? I'm, I'm, I'm assuming these work great. They might not do, we've not tested them yet, but based off the previous CSL Elite pedals, the function of, do you want some nice load cell pedals that you can slap on your rig and they're gonna do the job more than just fine, whilst also looking nice and whilst also giving you a little bit of easy to access brake customization. That is what these pedals do. <laughs> that, and that is why I, I really like them. I'll have to be honest, the CSL pedals, the, the new cheaper, the cheapest pedals that uh, Fanatec do, and they do a load cell version, they work perfectly fine. They work completely fine. They do the job. There's nothing wrong with them at all. So if you're on a pure, absolute pure budget and you, you want even less adjustment of the load cell and you, want, you just want the cheapest load cell pedals that work perfectly fine, the CSL pedals just go for them. Um, I'm really happy with them. I use them quite a bit on my uh, on some of my rigs, but these are uh, these should be interesting to test out and see if they do live up to the CSL Elite name. <laughs> and we're definitely going to have to do some more adjustment and tweaking. I'm not going to touch these here because I want to put them on the rig out of the box and see what they feel like out of the box. Um, other other notable things we're saying in this unboxing video. They now all have Hall effect sensors on the throttle and the accelerator. Well, it's a load cell for the, for the brake. Throttle and accelerator have Hall effect sensors. That's nice because they generally require less maintenance um, than potentiometers. And the potentiometers on the previous pedals, I didn't have problems with them, but over time they could collect dust and you'd have to uh, squirt the dust out with a bit of compressed air. Um, most people will think that Hall Effect sensors are nicer. There's, there's pros and cons to them. I like Hall Effects. I like potentiometers as well. I don't really care. <laughs> if it works, it works. That's my view. Anyway, there's the CSL Elite V2. First look at these pedals. Too much talking. Let me know in the uh, video if this was like the worst unboxing video ever or if you like someone talking too much about pedals. Um, maybe you do. But uh, until the next one, guys, thank you very much for watching this. I'm going to get this on my sim rig and do some testing with them. Happy tea drinking. And goodbye.